When you're getting ready to do your temp zone flex installation, make sure you get the correct dimensions of the room. Send us those dimensions in a drawing and we will supply you with a smart plan, installation plan showing how to lay the product out. When you get the product, make sure you test it with a digital ohmmeter to make sure that the numbers on your meter match the product specifications on the label that you can see there. If it tests good, you can now install the circuit check onto the wires and this will be your eyes and your ears during your installation. And this will tell you if you run into a problem with your wire. So make sure that you get this installed and tested to make sure it works correctly. And once you do, you can start laying the product out on the floor. Now we can go ahead and mark the location of our start point. And now we can do our cuts and turns laying the product out on the floor according to the installation plan. Make sure when you're doing your cuts and turns, do not cut the heating wire. You can only cut the green mesh. Also notice that the mesh is installed with the wire facing down. You do not attach the product to the subfloor. You just place it loosely to make sure your cuts and turns will fit and that your whole room is covered appropriately. Stay away from any permanently installed fixtures as shown here with the blue tape with the X's marked through it. So we're not going to go under those. We're going to go around those and we'll be taking some wire off of the mesh for a free form to allow us to do that. So go ahead and put the product and lay it out, continue to lay it out. And when you're getting your cuts and turns done uh, and you're working around a toilet, make sure that you keep the heating wire at least four inches away from the wax ring. And once you realize that it does fit, then you can attach it to the subfloor. Here you can see that we're using a stapler. The stapler is being used to staple into the mesh. You never ever staple over the wire. And you can see here where the mesh is being used to hold the freeform wire in place and it's being stapled through the mesh to hold it in place. We suggest that you use a hot glue gun and hot glue to hold the product in place and use, you can use a tool to uh, push that uh, mesh down into the glue. Continue gluing around it and it must be attached very well to the subfloor because if you're using self-leveling, the product will try to float in the subfloor. So it's very, very important to get the product attached to the subfloor. Here we can see where we're working around the factory splice. That's that large area there on the wire that goes from the non-heating lead to the heating wire. That must be buried in thin set or self-leveling. Now we can put in our sensor and the sensor must be installed between two heating wires, not running over one of the heating wires. Here you can see it's in an open loop. Once we have the product laid out on the floor, we test it once again to make sure that it's good. And if it's good, we attach the circuit check device to the product once again, and it's ready to be covered. Here we can see that we're getting ready to measure our self-leveling mix. Make sure that you follow the mix directly as it shows on the bag and mix it accordingly and to the correct thickness. Once you have it mixed and ready to go, you're going to pour about a 3 8 to 1 half inch layer of self-leveling, and that's going to give you a nice level floor to put your tile down onto. So once your self-leveling is firm enough to walk on, you can go ahead and start installing your tile. If you're using levelers as shown here, make sure that the levelers are put in very carefully so you don't damage any of the wire. And here we can see the finished product. <music> 